do you think that that helped the tree emotionally that I defended her out loud? Absolutely. She knew. She could feel your vibration. She could feel you running on the grass to, to her as all the plants were screaming. <laughs> What are you doing? All right, so if you're here, you've probably seen part one and part two, and you've gotten the gist of this story, what is going on. So in part three here, we are going to do our best to just show a little bit more of what happened in this initial confrontation, and then the confrontations to follow, and we're just going to sum it up and talk about what was wrong and how it could be made right maybe or if it can so thank you for watching this third video and not sure what we're gonna do about the crepe myrtle y'all I mean just to be real this is coming down to the wire and the tree company that said it could be moved last week has not gotten back to us with a quote and strangely enough the property that, that it could possibly moved on to we don't know who owns that property or how to contact them this is the name of the corporation that owns it, but as you can see, it's dissolved, which I think it means they're not in business anymore. So what's really weird is that property was purchased on my birthday, August 21st. So I believe in synchronicities and I believe it's some kind of sign. So I'm hopeful. That's an excessive amount of magnolia trimmings right on the ground next to the magnolia tree. Please send this land some love. This is the week that they plan to kill the trees that are in the way of their development. It's one thing seeing the house go down, whatever. The house isn't living, but to see the trees go down and all the creatures living in them, the squirrel nests and the bird's nests, well, that's just really, really, really hard. And the fact that they are being insensitive about it is just crazy making. Here the girls are dancing around the pine tree and you can see behind them is the baby magnolia that has grown into a mama papa magnolia. There's also just a two lane highway on North Druid Hills behind them and a cow pasture down the road. It's a in the trees but I clean around the city of trees. So in part two we saw that they went to go get the map and now we are looking at it. And actually, before we looked at the map, we made a phone call. So let's listen to that. They said they would save the magnolia tree. Yeah, the ma magnolia tree is not coming down. But the limbs have been cut down. Okay. Because yeah, I don't. I mean, I hate to be a in this room, but the call. So I don't know what you want me to do about it. I don't know, well, I don't know when the truck, when the trucks were coming in and out for the demo. If they, you know, one of the trucks caught one of the limbs or something. But no, no, no. He. He chopped, he chopped the limbs off. I mean, I'm looking at it, they're all chopped off. And he said, he said his boss told him to, and I said maybe he misunderstood. Yeah, I don't know about that, but I, I don't, I'm trying to be, um, I'm trying to be understanding of your situation to the tree. But, um, you know, I don't, do you own part of the property or something? What business of yours is that tree? They told us they would save the magnolia tree. Okay. And they, uh, they also said if we found a place for the crepe myrtle, then we could move it there. And we did. So we're saving the crepe myrtle tree also. Okay. So then, you know, I don't, like I said, I'm not trying to be ugly to you. Really, I'm not. You're not being, you're not being ugly. I don't think you're if, being ugly. If you're going to get the crepe myrtle, you need to get it. It's going to be gone, you know. How do you plan on getting the crepe myrtle tree? Do you know how to move trees? No, oh, ma'am, I don't know. No, we just, we just take them out. We're not good at saving them. So. I will be glad to have a conversation with you about this later, but those men need to get back to work, okay? Okay, but are they going to not cut down? They're not going to do anything. They're not going to do anything. The Craig Myrtle does, I mean, that poly tree, a magnolia tree, does not come down. Get my cell phone number from them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I got, is that his cell phone number? The yeah, 794. Do you want me to just get some ribbon and we'll mark off the crepe myrtle for now? 
Alrighty then, the tension is thick. Let's go back to reading the map. So where are the trees that you're saving? What's what's the circle around the tree? So, so this is saving. Mm -hmm. So you were supposed to save all these around it. No. Are those the ones like when it says the tree's name? Does that mean you save it or? Uh, they don't say the name. Yeah, it says the name right here. Like there, it's there. It says the pecan tree. Wait, where is it? It says pecan. Oh, to be removed. Pecan to be removed. Pecan, it doesn't say to remove this one, so we're keeping that one. Or to be removed, to be removed. See, this is not to be removed. There's no to be removed. So we, we are supposed to save all those magnolias around it. Or, or. So we want to put the ribbon on the magnolia tree? Dude. Look at how those branches have been ripped off. Look at that. Look at the strings. The, yeah, there's two. Yeah, there's two. This ribbon? Yeah, yeah, all of it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a whole circle around it on the map, so you weren't supposed to touch it at all. It was supposed to all. It was supposed to all stay. I'm guessing they were supposed to fence around it. I'm not sure. I called Russell Tonning, the arborist, to ask him about the legitimacy of this. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, here too. You might get tired and forget, you know, it's hard work. David goes, oh, they just bumped it with their machinery. They know they're not supposed to cut anything down. I go, David, they cut it down, look. He goes, it doesn't look cut. It looks like it just got bumped off. He literally pointed to the branch that was scraped apart and he said, that just looks like it got bumped off by mistake. I go, this was torn off the so tree. I think the reason table. why they said, oh, it just bumped it by mistake because they know they're liable now because that was marked off by the city. They, do, they, they violated the city plans and there's a whole circle around it. And I said, so can you, can it be fixed somehow? Can we graft the branch back onto the tree? And he goes, well, find out when the guy comes to talk about saving the tree. And I go, well, can you cover that cost? He, he said that we have until about Monday to move the crepe myrtle. By the way, this is when we thought we could move the tree to UUCA, but after the tree arborist came, the tree saver came, he said that we really couldn't move it because of the power lines. And also UUCA thought that we would have they would have to resubmit their plan to get approval with the city, but after I talked to Russell Tonning, he actually said that he could approve something like that really quickly, so that wouldn't be an issue, FYI. They weren't even supposed to cut any trees today, they were just supposed to clear it loud. Hey, it's hard to get the words out right when you're emotional. So here I'm gonna try to talk again with the boss. Um, so I guess you guys spoke and, and you know that what they did violated the plans. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, because sometimes it happens, you know, big equipment trying to get it through there, you know, it's hard of It wasn't just getting the equipment through. They knowingly cut the branches off because they said that you said to. No, that's not accurate. Yeah, they knocked them off on purpose. Like, it wasn't an accident. You know that, right? You know, I, I have to, I have to take this limbs down, you know, because it's good in my way, you know? I don't know why they would have done that, but you know, I suppose I suppose to clear all these. See, you see, no, this limb, 
Come, come, only way, only way to here. What, what are you trying to accomplish? What are we trying well, to they accomplish? misunderstood you, is what I'm, well, I'm... Okay, what's the end result of this conversation that we're having? Because the limbs are broken now, so there's nothing we can do about that. So what is the end result of this conversation? Because we can talk about it all day long. Okay, basically, I just want to use an analogy here because you're, you are being a little bit short with me. You wouldn't just yeah, cut someone's, day, you wouldn't just cut, can I finish what I'm saying? You wouldn't, can I finish what I'm saying? I know you're a busy guy, but I'm a busy girl too, and you're not even letting me get a word in. Yeah, really, it's none of your business. Yes, it is. If you were to, yes, it is my business. If you were to cut someone's arms off, you wouldn't just be like, okay, what do we do now? The arms are just off. Okay? The the whole point. You don't own the property. Whew. You think that's unpleasant, y'all. It gets worse, but I'm not going to leave that conversation in this video. I am going to post it on my Patreon account, but some cursing did happen, and I'm not very proud of it, but I do think it's important to share the truth, so I will share that on the safe space of the Patreon platform. And I'm just going to share a little bit more of this conversation and then we will move on to exploring how people can take accountability and not just brush you off because everything matters here. You gotta admit that you messed up because you didn't, you didn't make it clear to your workers who don't know English on how to save the tree. And you probably will be held accountable by the city because the city does not mess around. It's not just a mistake. You had guidelines you had to follow. So why don't, you can try to fix it. You don't just mess up and say, oh, there's nothing I could do. Are you finished? No. You also said they were gonna kill the crepe myrtle today, which isn't true because I talked to David and he said we have until Monday to save it. And I videoed the guy admitting on video that he knowingly cut the branches off. Can I go now? Okay, bye. Have a good day. Lots of love to you. I'm sending love. We just gonna keep giving each other Love. I guess I didn't keep my cool. I don't own the tree. I agree. The problem is, it was in agreement that the tree would be saved. The problem is not who the F owns the tree. It was in agreement that the tree would be saved. And I think that's how they got the zoning passed. So in a sense, the tree owns itself. The tree can't speak out, so all who care need to. But anyway, basically he is saying this whole pile of magnolia branches was created by heavy equipment accidentally brushing the tree? That is a really big one that they tore up right there. That's a lot of branches for a little accident. This big pile. Right here. That is still there. This one was just torn from the ground. I don't remember that one being torn up over there. Big old pile of magnolia ruins. So disrespectful. Love will cure the world. Listen, boys and girls. The joy that we're creating is flowing. So stop waiting. I'm pretty sure that everything on this side of this fence. Was supposed to be left alone. We just got to keep giving each other love, giving each other love, giving each other love. We just got to keep giving each other love, giving each other love, giving each other love. We just got to keep giving each other love. A week ago, Monday, because this happened Tuesday, if I was standing here. I would barely even be able to see the trunk of the magnolia because she was so protected by all the other little sprouts of her all around her. Like this one, which was also mangled. It's 
really a beautiful thing when you feel that forest energy. It's not just about a single tree. It's about how they're all connected. Look how gorgeous that is. It wants to look like this all the way to the bottom. Imagine that. Not anymore. Once again, the developers claim that this small tree, now dead on the ground, and then all of its friends, was just heavy equipment rushing by the tree. Okay, let's summarize why this is not okay. Number one, driving heavy equipment in the area is an issue. Why? A. It hurts the roots. B. It compacts the soil. C. It suffocates the tree. And D. It starves the tree. I double checked this info with Patty Jenkins from treeinspection.com and she said yes, heavy equipment is prohibited in a tree save area because it compacts the soil and prevents the tree from getting water, which is critical to its survival. Now the other thing that went down is they ripped the limbs off with an excavator. This is wrong in many ways. First of all, now we can't climb the tree anymore. Children can't and their residents can't. B, you can move the trunk when you rip it like that, which can dislodge roots and create instability. It can also push the tree a little bit, which can kill some of the roots, and it can destroy the bark of the tree. You know, if you are going to remove the limbs because you have to remove the limbs, the proper way to remove limbs is gentle sawing. The fact that they remove the limbs not only the wrong way is an issue, but also that they remove them at all. Some would say this ruins the beauty of the tree. And let us can stop the tree from being protected and thriving in many different ways. Basically, if you're going to save a tree and you have to remove the limbs, you properly saw them off with a clean cut. You don't rip them off with a darn excavator. Come on. Another violation is that they removed the smaller trees in the area that were supposed to stay. And then finally, they were extremely rude to the tree and all of us. I realized I wasn't powerless or helpless. It was just time to call the city arborist Russell Tonning. I spoke to him several times, writing him letters about trying to save these trees two years ago when the hearings for the zoning change were first happening. You also might recognize this name because I think I might have brought him up in the videos I did about tree ordinances, um, which I still need to finish. But anyway, time to contact Russell. It took me a little bit to get in touch with Russell, but you know, you gotta be patient. I left a message and he got in touch with me and he said just to send it to him in writing, which I did. And I sent him pictures as well. I hadn't made a video yet. And then he went and forwarded it to, um, I guess the inspectors. But this was Tuesday, and today is Monday, and I still hadn't heard anything, so today I called again. After seeing some trees get cut down at the property, but after learning what I did from Willow, and you can hear that conversation in part two, I decided, well, it's probably a good idea to warn these trees that they're about to be killed. Everything between this orange fence and that orange fence is coming down. And to let them know how much I appreciate and love them and how grateful I am for everything that they've provided to me, life energy-wise. This Y-shaped tree is one pecan, which is going, and then this pecan right here in the orange, the one closest to the orange fence is staying. She or he has a whole bunch of woodpecker holes, which is kind of cool looking, but maybe not so good for the tree. They are coming to kill you, please be prepared. I love you so much. Thank you for all of the oxygen you've given me and my brothers and sisters. Thank you for your life. Please brace yourself. Looks like you've already started crying. A tear. <sighs> Ten 
to me. Sending so much love. So I called Russell Tonning a few times and then I finally got through to him after Qigong class. He said to get in touch with Mr. Adam Evans who was Miss Ryder's supervisor. So I got in touch with him after I actually tried to email Miss Ryder because I didn't have Adam's email and then her automatic reply said she was out of the office, please call Adam and it left his number. So I did and he said to email him and then um, I called back to make sure he got my email and he didn't and so while we were talking he found it and he assigned the inspection to someone else who is supposedly going to come inspect either later today or tomorrow morning and they already started cutting down the trees so I don't know what's gonna happen but they were very very nice and they thanked me and hopefully they will make sure everything's okay with the magnolia. And I mentioned, well, if the magnolia is now destroyed, perhaps we can save the crepe myrtle? Interesting development. I have no idea what's gonna happen. I have no idea if the crepe myrtle's gonna even be there at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. They messed up. You know, when demolition people are doing the job and they aren't given specific instructions on how to preserve or save the trees that need to be saved, it leads to more human error. And as far as taking accountability, once again from our friend Patty Jenkins with TreeInspection.com, she comments the developer had no business with that heavy equipment inside the tree save zone. You'll need to work with Russell and the other powers that be to deal with that. Make sure he demands that the developer pay for soil remediation, which should include air spading and a regular watering schedule. So hopefully the inspection team will do that and she will be okay. You can try to fix it. You don't just mess up and say, oh, there's nothing I could do. Are you finished? But if not, maybe they can consider saving the crepe myrtle now. If that's, I mean, a healthier option at this point. What if the magnolia tree was murdered? Would it make more sense to now negotiate swapping out the tree that's being saved? The crepe myrtle's been a little bit damaged here. Maybe somehow. This tree branch is down. Oh, I see it cracked over there. So they already destroyed part of it somehow. Maybe the tree, maybe one of the vehicles got caught in it and snapped it. I mean, at this, I mean, point, at this point, is the crepe myrtle, myrtle a healthier, a healthier option, option for saving? For saving? saving? Have a beautiful night. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like and comment and hit the bell button and all that stuff. And if you become a Patreon, that would make my day and help to fund my time in making these vlogs and saving trees. Though we may not save the trees mentioned in this video, we can hopefully change this mindset that you are witnessing, which can do greater harm on a more massive scale. This is the microcosm of the macrocosm, the mindset of just having apathy for our trees instead of being in relationship with them. Love ya. Bye.